In an emergency situation that forces you to either flee your home or leave a dangerous situation to get to a safer location, your vehicle allows you to quickly cover distance and carry crucial survival gear. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the bug out vehicle. Now, I have a family of five that includes a very young child. So for me, having a vehicle that's ready along with the necessary gear to ensure that we can make it on our own if we have to flee our home and to potentially live out of it for several days is really important to me. I'll discuss 16 important categories that you should consider when deciding what items that you're gonna always wanna have in your vehicle, along with the critical gear you'd want to have on standby that you can quickly load. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna detail some things that you should learn as soon as possible. Now, before we jump into these items, let's answer this question. What is the best bug out vehicle? The answer is the one that you have. Now, my primary standby bug out vehicle is my Jeep. It's a four x four. It's very capable for off-roading. I'm surrounded by mountains with a lot of off-roading trails, so I went with a vehicle that's geared very low to handle steep climbs and rock crawling and is small enough to get around the trails in my area. But the principles we're gonna lay out in this video, they're gonna apply to any vehicle. Feel free to modify or swap out any of the items that we'll cover, but the categories I detail are pretty universal and base what you pack based on your specific needs and your vehicle's capabilities. So let's jump in. Download the Start Preparing Survival Guide to help you prepare for any disaster. I'll post a link in the description and comments section below or visit cityprepping.com forward slash get started for a free guide to help you get started on your journey of preparedness. Now, I realize this is not covering items per se, but you need to stay on top of your vehicle's maintenance. Vehicles that come with a manufacturer's guide that defines recommended maintenance that you should be doing based on the miles driven. In addition to maintenance, get in the habit of keeping the tank at a minimum half full. Now, I typically don't let it drop below a quarter empty. Make sure the tires are in good condition and stay on top of your oil changes, air filter, radiator fluid levels, and other tune-up considerations. If you're not sure where to start and you don't have the money to take it to a car repair shop to get a tune-up, you can get the parts at your local auto store like AutoZone, and you can find plenty of videos on YouTube to walk you through the process of doing a basic tune-up. All right, so let's jump into the actual items that we want to have on hand. Safety, first aid. Now these are the items that I keep in my vehicle at all times and within arm's reach as I want these readily available and easy to access. Now I keep my first aid kit in my middle console, which is a bleeding prevention kit from Refuge Medical, which also includes a tourniquet. And I also have a seatbelt cutter along with a windshield breaker on the roll bar right above my head. And behind me, I've got a fire extinguisher on the back of the driver's seat. Again, I would recommend that you always keep these in your vehicle and easily accessible. Self-recovery. If things have truly gone sideways and you're on the road, it's gonna be up to you to take care of problems that come up if you get stuck or you have a flat tire. Now, like the first aid items, also keep these in your vehicle at all times. Most of these items, minus the spare tire, I keep under my back seat and behind the back seats of my Jeep. Before I go through these items, let me strongly encourage you to change your tire with the spare tire. It's a great way to make sure that you understand how to do this and have the correct tools in your vehicle. Jack. My vehicle requires a special jack due to having a lift kit and the fact that I need to change tires in off-road situations. Lug wrench. It's a good idea to go ahead and upgrade to a four-way lug wrench and make sure it matches the lug nuts on your vehicle. Tire repair kit. Now it's small enough that I keep it in my vehicle at all times. Air compressor. I currently have an air compressor built into my vehicle, but you can buy portable air compressors or even a simple manual air pump will suffice. Can of fix-it flap. Hazard lights. I prefer the LED kind. Emergency battery charger and or jumper cables. Now I have both of these options in my vehicle. And finally, mechanics gloves. If you have to do any type of work on your vehicle, having a good pair of gloves to protect your hands will be vital. In addition to fixing issues that may come up, if you get stuck somewhere, you need options to get you unstuck. Now my vehicle, I always have tow cables and straps, and I've also got a winch mounted on the front. Now for my Jeep, I also have traction boards on standby that are staged with the items that I can toss easily into my vehicle. Vehicle items. Now these are the items that allow you to make repairs or fix minor problems that may come up along the way and you need a few crucial items if you're driving long distances. I'm gonna break this into two groups. The first group of items that I always have in my vehicle, mostly under the back seat 
and then the items that I have staged next to my vehicle if I have to quickly leave. So let's start off with the items that I always keep in my vehicle. Now, the first one is a reflective vest. And I this is useful if you're working on your vehicle on the side of the road and maybe it's at nighttime and you don't wanna get hit, you wanna have this on. I also, as you can see, have this strapped together with extra clothes. Depending on what I'm wearing, I may need a change of clothes to allow me to do some work if I'm gonna get really dirty. Now, the next item is a socket wrench set. This is a basic setup to allow me to work on some stuff. Then I've got mul uh, just a basic multi-tool. And again, these can come in handy with so many different things. I've got zip ties, and then I've got duct tape. And what can't you fix with some duct tape? And finally, this one maybe is a little off the beaten track, but this is uh, batteries for my key fob. I was one time camping and literally <laughs> the batteries died in my key fob and uh, that was a pretty difficult situation. So these are items that I always have in my vehicle at all times. Now this next group of items are items that I keep on standby in the garage next to my vehicle and I can quickly grab them if I have to go. The first is a toolkit roll. And I've already done a video on this. If you wanna check it out, I'll put a link to it below, but it's got a lot of different tools for different purposes. Now, the next one are some extra fluids for my vehicle, some oil for the engine and some coolant for the radiator. Now, the next one is a spare can for gasoline. So obviously I can carry more gas or if I need to take on some gas, if I'm on a trip and I just wanna add on some extra, I can do that. And the last one is a siphon and pump. Now, again, if I'm in a situation where I do come across gas and I'm, for whatever reason, not able to pump it out, I can use this. It's got a hand pump and it allows me to actually pull up gasoline from anything that I need, including a vehicle, and I can fill this up as well as my Jeep. Tools. Now, regarding these tools, I also keep these in my vehicle at all times under and behind my back seats. Why? Well, because when I go off-roading, having an ax or saw to be able to cut trees or remove branches that may have fallen across the road or using a shovel to dig out of a situation is important. Additionally, having bolt cutters could be invaluable if you run into a situation where a trail may be locked off or gates are locked. Now, having these basic tools ensures that you can get around a situation. So again, I've got a pair of bolt cutters. I've used these quite a lot. I've got just a uh, ax here. Then I've got a small shovel that fits in the back of my seat. It's not huge, but it's enough to take care of things. Last of all, I've got a Silky Saw. This is their Katana 650. It's very capable if I have to cut down large branches or even potentially trees. Comms. When you're out on the road, having a way to keep updated and being able to communicate with others, it's gonna be vital. Now, apart from the radio that's in your car, here are the items that you should consider. Now, the most common form of comms that we all have on our person is, of course, our cell phone. So make sure that you have a way to keep it charged by having a car phone charger that plugs into your cigarette lighter and the cords necessary to plug it all together. Now, since I have a ham radio license, I keep a ham radio in my glove box at all times. And I'll post a link to a video that I did a while back that walks you through the process of getting your ham radio license. Now, additionally, in my glove box, I've got a Garmin inReach, which allows me to send and receive text messages via satellite. Additionally, I keep a pair of walkie-talkies stored in my garage with my other important items that I have ready to take. Now, the last item is a Starlink satellite dish. Now, these are not cheap, but it comes in handy for off-roading when I'm in remote locations. I also have it on standby if the grid were to go down at my house. Navigation. When discussing navigation, you've got several options. Now, these are all options that I keep in my Jeep at all times. First, let's look at our phone. You can download an offload map of your local area on your phone with Google Maps. So if cell phone coverage is down, you will have a map backed up to your phone. Just go to YouTube and search download Google Maps offline. And there's plenty of tutorials that will show you how to do this. Now, additionally, you can check out Gaia app. There's a free version. And again, this is a very powerful tool. Even the free versions work well. And of course, having a physical copy of maps of your local area with a compass is important because if the internet is down, well, at least you have this. Now for longer distances, I keep a Randy McNally map. You can pick these up online and these will allow you to understand and see where you gotta go if you need to cover long distances. Documents. Make sure you keep a physical copy of your current insurance and your car registration in your vehicle at all times. Now, I personally keep these here in my glove box. I know some apps will allow you to load your insurance on your phone, 
but if I were to get pulled over, I don't want to open up an app on my phone and then hand over my phone to an officer, essentially giving them full access. But instead, I prefer to just hand them over hard copies of these documents. Now, I have these printed and easily accessible so you're not rummaging around your car if you were to get pulled over. Have them somewhere central. You know where they're at. You can easily get a hold of them. Intel. What do I mean by this category? What intel are we gathering? Now, there's several different ways you can look at this. Say you're driving and there's an accident that you see far ahead on the road blocking the way. Do you go near to the scene to help or do you fly in your drone to check it out in advance to ensure that it's a legit accident? Maybe someone has set up a fake situation to lure you into an ambush. Or maybe you're in an unknown area and you get lost and you want to pop up and look to see what's around you. Or maybe you're contemplating driving onto a busy road with other vehicles, but not sure what's ahead. Maybe there's a traffic jam and you wanna go around the area onto secondary roads. And for this reason, I keep a drone in my glove box as it allows me to pop up, look ahead, look around, and then scout out the situation. Now, additionally, a simple pair of binoculars can allow you to look out at your surrounding area. Bug out bags. I've done several dedicated videos on the subject and I'll refer you to those videos, but I keep these for each family member on standby in my garage. I put them, as you can see, last into the vehicle as I want them to be easy to grab if we have to bail out on the car. Water. Now there's a couple of considerations here. First, we wanna have water ready to grab and toss into our vehicle. The general rule of thumb is one gallon per person per day. Now, since I'm planning for a minimum of three days of water on hand, I need about 15 gallons ready for my family of five. Now, additionally, we can refill them in various places along the way. So I keep purification tablets and a catered in water filter with a hand pump in our gear. I went with this particular water filter as I can pump water from a source into our water containers. And since we live in an urban environment, I also keep a silcock key that allows me to open various water faucets, such as the kind that you find on commercial buildings. Food, cooking, fuel. Now my approach when it comes to food is to avoid cooking and cleaning entirely. And for that reason, I've got a mix of MREs and I've got various freeze dried food. We've got a lot more inside of here. The MREs can be heated up with their own internal heaters and for the freeze dried food, they only require boiling water. So for heating up water, I've got a jet boil along with various fuel canisters to heat up the water. Now, these are pretty small and lightweight and they barely take up any room in our containers, yet they can heat up water very quickly. Now, if I were to run out of fuel, I do have a small backpacking solo stove, which it will produce some smoke, but it would be fairly minimum. Also, make sure you have some forks, some plates, and some soap and sponges to clean the items which I keep in here, some paper towels and some trash bags, and again, some matches or lighters, which we keep in our bug out bags. Warmth, shelter. When it comes to shelter, my Jeep has a rooftop tent that's mounted on the back. And as you can see, it's collapsed right now, but it unfolds like a book. It opens up and then I have a ladder that comes down the side so that I can climb up inside. And I've also got an annex in the back that I can zip in here on the side so we'd have shelter for our family if we need it. Now, additionally, I keep our sleeping bags, our rain flies, and our rain gear inside of our bug out bags for each individual. And if we had a bell in the Jeep and just walk or take off with only our bug out bags, we do have shelter available in our bags. Now, additionally, we keep a wool blanket inside of our containers. And during the cooler months, I have a Mr. Buddy heater on standby with our gear along with a propane tank and a hose. Security. For security, I keep my rifle and magazines in a gun case along with an ammo can that has plenty of 5.56 along with nine millimeter. And since I have a CCW license, I keep my secondary on my person at all times. And for the context of this video, you have to remember that we're discussing a situation where the grid may be down and you're on your own. There's no 911 that you can call. There's no first responders. You are your first responder. Unfortunately, those that are not prepared will look for easy targets. That should not be you. Personal hygiene. Observing your personal hygiene can make a big difference. Now, I keep a bucket that serves as a toilet and inside I have various things. I've got poop bags, I've got baby wipes, I've got toilet paper, I've got gloves, I've got soap, I've got hand sanitizer, and on the top, as you can see here, is a little toilet seat. I can just toss this in one of the containers and it snaps right on. And additionally, this is not necessarily hygiene, but I also keep insect repellent 
along with our toothbrushes and toothpaste inside of our bug out bag. So that's all covered in those bags. But you have to think from the perspective of you're gonna need to use the bathroom and having a basic setup like this can really make a big difference. Power generation. Now the last category is power generation. What are we powering? Well, it depends upon what electronics you have. I've got a Starlink satellite dish, so I keep a solar generator and two 200 watt panels next to it on standby. And let me say, you don't necessarily need all of this, but it fits my specific needs. And of course, you can power most of your smaller electronics by charging them in the vehicle, but I keep these on standby with my other gear. I know we've covered a lot, but hopefully this gives you a framework of what you want on standby. I posted links to everything below in the description and comment section below if you wanna check out any of the items. I would definitely encourage you to check out our other video I'll post up here on the side of the screen that shows you how to build bug out bags for an entire family. Let me know if you have any feedback, any thoughts, if there's anything I missed, feel free to post that below. And as always, stay safe out there.